so we have 10 minutes to debate each resolution. The first resolution is 2020-006 uh, um, regarding Democratic National Convention voting rights. Uh, so just to explain what we're doing, as opposed to a unity report, which uh, which addressed the con call of the convention, which is a very low order document in the in the realm of things, what uh, people for Democratic Party reform are doing are proposing amendments to the charter and the bylaws to make these things permanent. And so the language uh, gets a little technical because it is about amending the specific language in the bylaws. Uh, so this is not a general desire which someone else gets to amend and um, uh, interpret into their own words. This is saying what we want to do to the bylaws of the Democratic Party. So it reads, whereas the charter of the Democratic National Committee states in Article 1 that the Democratic Party of the United States of America shall establish standards and rules of procedure to afford all members of the Democratic Party full, timely, and equal opportunities to participate in the decisions concerning the selection of candidates, the formulation of policy, and the conduct of other party affairs without prejudice on the basis of sex, race, age, if of voting age, color, creed, national origin, religion, economic status, sexual orientation, gender identity, ethnic identity, or disability. Therefore, resolved, the people of Democratic Party reform requests that the charter of the Democratic National Committee be amended by inserting in Article 2, Section 4, the words and associate delegates, period, delegates shall be, and striking Section H, notwithstanding any provision to the contrary in this section provided for, and inserting non-voting associate delegates shall be defined as, and then striking permit after uh, double I, and striking sections five B, C, and D. And so this, what the effect of these will become more clear as we read through the resulting section. And the effect of this is what I commonly hear called for, which is that the people who vote at the Democratic National Convention be those pledged delegates direct, elected directly from the states and that unpledged delegates uh, would not be allowed to vote so that what this does is classifies them as associate non-voting delegates to the convention and this eliminates the extra bonus delegates awarded to late primaries. So in the uh, resulting, as the resulting section is formatted, the bold is the added letter, letters, added words, and the strike throughs are the um, eliminated language. So it reads in section four, the national convention shall be composed of delegates and associate delegates, period. Delegates shall be, and then this talks about how they will be equally divided between men and women. And this is all the language that currently exists in the, in the document. And then it goes down to um, section H where we strike notwithstanding any provision to the contrary in the section uh, and we add language, non-voting associate delegates shall be defined as, and then this is the existing language that defines all of those people who are in addition to those directly ele elected by the states. And then in section five, this is where we strike out all of the additional delegates that are awarded. So the resulting effect of this resolution is to make a convention that is uh, proportionally representative of the Democrats in the United States of America, similar to how the House of Representatives is um, allocated. Um, so that is the first one. Um, is there any debate? We have a couple of hands up, Mr. Chair. First is Jason. Jason. I apologize. My hand must have been still raised. Uh, okay, sorry about you. that. Um, we have uh, Catherine. 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 She, she's unmuted on this end. Um, no, I was seconding a motion. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, sorry about debate? that. 
Uh, is there no further debate? I see nothing. Okay, uh, we will go to a vote and this has its own poll. So this is res resolution 2020-006. So all those in favor, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> all those in favor of the convention adopting resolution 2020-006 regarding Democratic National Convention voting rights, please vote yes. Anyone opposed to uh, the resolution, please vote no. Poll is launched. Uh, the vote, uh, let's close the poll. The vote is 59 in favor and zero opposed. So the first resolution passes. We'll now go to the second resolution, uh, which is uh, resolution 2020-005 um, regarding the election of DNC standing committee members. Um, so just, uh, to, if you're unfamiliar with the challenge that we have, uh, currently the DNC chair appoints all of the members of the standing committees of the DNC, including the rules and bylaws committee and the platform committee. There are no requirements for geographic dis distribution or even qualifications for sitting on these committees. It's whoever the DNC chair chooses. And this sets up a very unhealthy relationship because they, oh, end up owing their allegiance to the DNC chair as opposed to uh, representing the people, which is whom they really should be represented. And so uh, what this does is that this provides a method for electing the members of the, the uh, standing committees in a way that is geographically dispersed. Uh, so the, the resolution reads, uh, whereas the charter of the Democratic National Committee acknowledges that a political party which wishes to lead must listen to those it would lead and a party which asks for the people's trust must prove that it trusts the people and a party which hopes to call forth the best the nation can achieve must embody the best of the nation's heritage and traditions. And whereas the Democratic Party, Democratic National Committee seeks for our nation political freedom in the framework of meaningful participation by all citizens and bound by the United States Constitution aware that a party must be responsive to the worthy of responsibility. Uh, the DNC has pledged to open honest endeavor and to the conduct of public affairs in a manner worthy of a society of free people. Whereas the charter of the DNC calls, the established, calls to establish standards and rules and procedures to afford all members of the Democratic Party full, timely, and equal opportunities to participate in decisions concerning the selection of candidates the formation of policy and the conduct of other party affairs. And whereas each official body of the Democratic Party created under the authority of the DNC Charter shall adopt and conduct its affairs accordance, in accordance with written rules, which rules shall be consistent with this Charter, the bylaws and other provisions adopted pursuant to authority of the Charter. And whereas the parliamentary authority states that in Democratic assemblies, Standing committees report to the membership and not to the executive board or board of directors. And whereas standing committee members should represent equivalent numbers of the electorate and be accountable to all Democrats. Resolved that the people of Demo the Democratic Party reform request that the bylaws of the Democratic National Committee be amended by inserting after Article 2, Section 10A, a new Section B, which reads, the standing committee shall have 103 members each with one member elected from each state, territory, or Democrats abroad, plus 47 elected by each state in proportion to their share of the Democratic popular vote for president in the prior presidential election. States, territories, and Democrats abroad will consider their respective state party delegation, delegate selection and affirmative action plans in their election of members to the standing committees. Standing committees members shall be elected by the delegates of each state, district, or territory central committee. 
Each of the standing committees will elect a chair and a vice chair. The election of standing committee members shall occur in the first quarter following the presidential election. And in, just in case there's any questions on the basis of the proportioning, um, there's a number of states that don't register number of Democrats. And so what in other places in the Democratic Party, what they resort to is a count of the ca votes cast for the Democratic candidate in the presidential election. So that is the motion uh, from the Platform and Resolutions Committee. Is there any debate? I don't see any hands up. No. Checking the uh, question and answer box right now, I don't see anything new there either. Uh, seeing no further debate, uh, would you please launch the poll for resolution 2020-005? Launched. Um, the voting seems to have ended. Um, please close the poll and the vote is 57 in favor and zero against. So resolution 2020-005 is adopted and we will go to the next one, which is uh, resolution 2020-009. Um, and this is uh, the correction of undemocratic practices within the Democratic Party. Uh, what we have found since the formation of PDPR is that we have a cultural problem within the Democratic Party that is uh, uh, occurring in many states. It's just not one or two isolated incidences. And what we have found through the work of some of the members that by bringing attention to these situations, uh, it's very difficult uh, because the processes aren't defined and you can see from the language that currently exists in the platform, it's, it's uh, murky on who takes responsibility for cleaning this stuff up. And so what this language does is gets very specific about what happens when a state party uh, is caught infringing upon the rights of its membership. So the resolution reads, whereas pursuant to the charter Article 10, Section 3, each official body of the Democratic Party created under the authority of this charter shall adopt and conduct its affairs in accordance with written rules, which rules shall be consistent with this charter, the bylaws and other provisions adopted pursuant to the authority of the charter, including resolutions or other actions of the National Convention. And whereas pursuant to the charter, Article 9, Section 14, in the absence of other provisions, Robert's Rules of Order, as most recently revised, shall govern the conduct of all Democratic Party meetings. And whereas pursuant to Robert's Rules of Order, a member of an assembly in the parliamentary sense, as mentioned above, is a person entitled to full participation in the, its proceedings, that is the right to attend meetings, to make motions, to speak and debate, and to vote. Therefore, resolved that the People for Democratic Party Reform calls on the delegates to the Democratic National Convention to amend the bylaws of the Democratic National Committee by inserting Article 2, Section 11B4, each state or territory party as they apply to their members and their respective units shall uphold the principles of democracy as described in the parliamentary authority, including but not limited to a member's rights to attend meetings make motions, debate, and vote, and insert in Section 10F, after Democratic National Committee, the words Rules and Bylaws Committee, and add to Article 2, Section 11F, after submission and acceptance of the report of noncompliance to the DNC Rules, Committee, by, Rules and Bylaws Committee, states and territory parties shall within 30 days submit a plan to correct the violations by the DNC Rules and Bylaws Committee, if the plan is not accepted or is accepted but not enacted within 90 days, the state or territory party shall call for new elections of officers within 30 days and conduct such elections within 30 days thereafter. 
and, af and after Article 2, Section 11F, if a state or territory party is alleged to have failed to comply with, delete this section and insert Article 2, Section 11. So if adopted, um, this is how the language will read and it'll unwind all the amendments so that you can see what the real meaning is. Um, so Article 2, Section 11, if a state or territory party is alleged to have failed to comply with Article 2, Section 11, the alleged noncompliance shall be referred to the Democratic National Committee Rules and Bylaws Committee for review, provided that any person alleging noncompliance at any level shall be a resident of the affected jurisdiction and provide that any person alleging noncompliance of a state or territory party with this section shall have exhausted all remedies provided by the states or territory party. After submission and acceptance of the report of noncompliance by the DNC Rules and Bylaws Committee, states and territory parties shall within 30 days submit a plan to correct the violations to the DNC Rules and Bylaws Committee. If the plan is not accepted or is accepted but not enacted within 90 days, the state or territory party shall call for new elections of officers within 30 days and conduct such elections within 30 days thereafter. So that is the content of the motion 2020-009. Uh, is there any debate? We have a motion to, uh, a question to ask if it is possible to amend a resolution. Oh yes, <laughs> because you so, wanted to. So then I, I imagine Judith will have a motion. There is also one more question if that could be answered. Um, let's do the question before the motion then. Um, assuming it has precedence. So uh, what is the question? Uh, I'm trying to find the question. Amber, are you it's looking a, at the question? Yeah, it's in the open, in the Q&A. I'm hoping ah, you guys can okay. see that. Thank you. Oh. Um, Susie, is that the one you're referring to? Correct. Okay. I understand that this is an educational exercise for some. In the future, if you require a two-third vote, you are basically stating that a smaller group of people get to block the majority. As an organizer, I would have to get over two-thirds to get people to agree to something, whereas the opposition would only need to get a little of a third. If it is inherently it is inherently undemocratic, and I hope that when progressives set up organizations in the future, they do not impose a two-third vote. Uh, so the two-thirds vote comes from the parliamentary authority, Robert's Rules of Order, and these are, uh, and if you read in the preamble, they talk about the rules protecting the rights of the majority, as well as the rights of the majority, and the rights of those who don't, don't, are not in attendance at the meeting. So. Uh, the two-thirds requirement is when people's rights are being impinged upon and when you find a minority that, uh, that is extending debate beyond what the, the supermajority wishes to, then, uh, then that's why it's two-thirds. So uh, this is, these rules have been under development for uh, well over 400 years and that is, those are the commonly acceptable practices. However, in your own society, if you wish to set up something that overrides those, then you, of course you can, you're welcome to build those into the bylaws. Um, so I believe there was a motion on the floor. Uh, actually, I believe she was asking uh, about motions for a different subject. I don't think that was this one. Um, okay. Is there any debate on the current motion? Uh, 2020-009. I see no hands up and I'm just checking this question box one more time. Yes, that motion was not for this resolution. So I think we're good. Okay. Um, hearing no further debate, we will proceed to the vote. So Sonia, would you please launch the poll for 2020-009? Launched.
Has everyone voted? Um, got a few more votes. Has everyone voted down? Still votes coming in. Has everyone voted down? It appears to have stabilized. Uh, please close the poll. The votes are 60 in favor and zero against. So resolution 2020-009 uh, is accepted by the convention. We will go to the next one, which is resolution 2020-003, um, a resolution for full participation, inclusion, and non-discrimination compliance with existing provisions of National Democratic Party rules through the formation of an advocate. Uh, this was submitted by, originally by Selena Vickers, and she's actually been trying to get this adopted by the rules and bylaws and the rules and bylaws committee. Um, and what she's found in working with the Democratic Party is that they have very Byzantine rules uh, and it is almost, it's a virtually hostile environment in which to get something brought to their attention. Uh, there seems to be reluctance to involve themselves in, in state party affairs, uh, even though they, they charter the state parties. Um, and so what this resolution calls for is the creation of a role of an ad advocate who would be a facilitator. Uh, so if I have something that uh, I'm, I have a problem with in my state and I want to bring something up against it, I have someone to go to who will help me and be my friend as I walk through these processes instead of being fi you know, finding at every step that I've missed a deadline or I've missed filing a form or some other requirement that invalidates all of my work. So that's the background to the resolution. And so I will read this now. Um, uh, whereas among other principles, the preamble of the charter provides that a political party which wishes to lead must listen to those it would lead and a party who asks for the people's trust must prove that it trusts the people. And whereas since the adoption of the Democratic Party Charter in 1974, the charter has prohibited discrimination of women and minority groups. The end that the Democratic Party at all levels be an open party, original charter, Article 10, Section 2. And whereas since the adoption of the Democratic Par Party Charter in 1974, the charter has mandated that state parties have affirmative action and inclusion of underrepresented groups to encourage participation at all levels of the party, as indicated by the presence in the Democratic electorate, and whereas the current charter of the Democratic Party provides slash mandates that state Democratic parties shall adopt and implement an affirmative action program which provides for representation as nearly as practicable in the aforementioned groups as indicated by their presence in the Democratic electorate chapter, uh, charter article eight, section three. And whereas the current charter of the Democratic Party provides mandates that state Democratic executive committees slash state committees must be equally divided as practicable between men and women determined by gender self-identification, Charter Article 9, Section 16. And whereas the DNC bylaws mandates that state democratic parties have outreach and inclusion programs to increase participation and representation of low and moderate income Democrats at the lowest level through the national level, DNC bylaws Article 2, Section 11, subsection B, I, and double I. Whereas the charter of the Democratic Party provides that all meetings of the Democratic National Committee and all other official party committees, commissions, and bodies shall be open to the public. Charter Article 9, Section 12, and the DNC bylaws provide that each state or territory party shall require each unit of the party which holds such meetings to publicize effectively and in a timely fashion the dates, times, and places of all such meetings, and that the name or names of the persons responsible for such meetings. Um, uh, and whereas some state Democratic parties do not comply with these provisions of the Charter and bylaws of the Democratic Party, and whereas the rules of the Democratic Party allow for Democrats in general to file challenges where there are violations of the above provisions, and whereas the pro process to file challenges to violations of provisions, it is very difficult and cumbersome. Therefore, be it resolved that the 2020 Democratic National Convention delegates, the highest authority of the Democratic Party, 
establish a position slash office of DNC advocate to number one, be an advocate for Democrats in general when violations of provisions in the state and territory parties occur and inform in understandable terms the complaints of the processes available to them for relief. Two, provide education and technical assistance on a voluntary basis to state and territory parties regarding effective implementation of the above provisions. Three, develop voluntary self-review, blind peer review, and grassroots observer review processes for determining compliance of state parties within party rules. Further resolve that the above mentioned advocate with, will be selected by and report directly to the DNC Rules and Bylaws Committee, as well as have a reasonable budget to provide for the costs of the work of the position. Further resolve that all complaints about violations of party rules, whether written or verbally received by a DNC member or DNC staff member be directed to the advocate. Um, so that is the resolution uh, uh, given to us by the awesome Selena Vickers. Is there any debate? There is uh, a motion. Thank you. I'm sorry, was, was there a debate? Uh, Hi, um, I'm unmuted. This is Melissa Michelson. <laughs> I, I would like to make an amendment into this language. So I'd like to move a, an amendment into, if you have to, you have to scroll up. Um, yes, tell me where you want uh, to uh, go. Second, second page. Okay. Uh, the, where, the, the whereas the, let's see, I have to move this. All meetings of the Democratic, yeah, the second whereas all meetings of the Democratic National Convention and all the other party committees, commission bodies shall be open to the public um and i would suggest here oh no wait uh which holds such meetings to publicize effectively and in timely matter timely fashion the dates times and places of um i think it would have to go um shall be open to the public and then my amendment is and make public in perpetuity the names of all delegates and their votes cast <clears throat> So um, your your motion actually belongs in the resolving section. Okay. So what you're amending is actually what is quoted from the bylaws and charter. So uh, perhaps there's somewhere in the resolving. Section. Yeah, that might okay. be a good place. And I'm open to um, you know finessing the language, but as I had mentioned yesterday, um, I think it needs to be made public what delegates voted on their names and how they voted who they voted so, for, um, thank you. That's great, so you need to give me your motion so I know what you wanna do. Okay, uh, let's see, um, you know, develop voluntary review to further resolve that the, I guess we could establish a position office, no. I guess it would be for another further resolved and it can be, put resolve report and then it could be the very last further resolved further resolved that the votes um, that the votes I'm not saying that the that votes cast and the names of the delegates that cast them be made public available to the public made available to the public in perpetuity. Uh, I do not believe this uh, amendment is germane. Okay. Um, so if you want to, it, and it sounds like a great idea. So we would, we would love, I mean, you know, the PDPR is not gonna uh, disappear after the convention because our work is gonna go on for decades. We would be glad to add that to the list of things that we will be submitting and advocating for changes um, in the DNC. Point of, point of information, is this not a resolution about transparency? No, this is about the creation of a role of an advocate. Okay, do we have a resolution in, 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 in favor of transparency? Uh, no. Okay, but all right. But you're welcome to work with us and, and get that developed. Got it, thank you. Thank you. Is there any further debate? Not that I see, Mr. Chair. 
Wait, let me just double check that. No, not that I see. Okay, could we have the poll for? Uh, Wait a minute, sorry. Point of information, requesting current attendance quorum since none of us can see the room. Uh, the current attendance is um, about 60, uh, 69. Okay, and uh, one more comment. This needs to be a bylaws change is the comment. Um, so this one is not an actual bylaws change. I think that would have made it stronger, but the way uh, Selena wrote this. This is requesting the DNC to create a role of an advocate. So it's not a role created in the uh, the charter of the bylaws, which would have cast it in concrete. Um, she's been working with the rules and bylaws committee for a couple of years, and so she felt that this was the best way to approach them. Um, and I I don't think Selena's with us today to speak further to it. Otherwise, I'd let her speak to it. Um, Thank other, you, Mr. Chair. Day, I believe that's it for questions. Okay, well, we'll move to a vote. Uh, so please go to the vote on 2020-003. There is another motion in the question. Oh, thank you. Um, the comment, sorry, we just got another comment in, sir. The comment to change the language about transparency is what needs to be a bylaws change, not about the role of advocate, says Margie. Thank you. Um, okay. Would you like me to launch the poll, sir? Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you. So again, a yes vote adopts this resolution by the convention, a no vote doesn't adopt. Still more votes coming in. Uh, if you haven't voted, please do so. One more. Any more? Uh, let's close the poll. Uh, the vote is 56 in favor and zero opposed. So resolution 2020-003 is adopted. And we will go now to Resolution 2020-004, um, re resolution demanding the DNC create an oversight committee regarding its finances. This was a resolution that a existing DNC member has been trying to get passed. Uh, and so we would like to, we're proposing to throw support behind his efforts uh, uh, because he's finding that there's a lack of transparency in the way the DNC uh, does its finances. So. Uh, it reads, whereas in 2016, the Democratic National Committee formed a unity reform commission for to evaluate and recommend changes for the functions and operations. And whereas concerns were raised by members of the unity commission that the current level of transparency and accountability for budget management within the DNC, specifically within the budget committee was insufficient and proposed recommendations and whereas the budget committee is charged with reviewing the budget, assist in developing priorities, reviewing majority contracts, and evaluating the performance of consultants and senior staff per the current DNC bylaws, and whereas the budget and finance committee is charged with providing the executive committee for discussion in closed session, its annual reports on the goals, purposes of expenditures, and the results of expenditures and staff per the DNC bylaws, Article 2, Section 10E2, or II. And whereas the Commission and DNC have failed to adopt such recommendations, which, were, which are needed to make the DNC more transparent and accountable to its members and more democratic by empowering the, the membership. And whereas the DNC Budget and Finance Committee has no, not provided annual reports for discussion nor implemented recommendations from the Unity Commission to alleviate concerns about transparency and accountability to its members. 
Now be it resolved that the DNC propose and approve a bylaw amendment that creates a, an oversight committee as an independent committee of the next meeting of the DNC. Resolve that the oversight committee will have a total of nine members to include two ex officio members who are the DNC chief executive officer and chief operating officer, uh, the chair of the ASDC or his, her, or their designee, six additional members to be nominated by the ASDC and caucuses and councils of the DNC. And the additional committee members shall be elected by the DNC membership and all committee members shall be voting members. Members of the committee shall be split evenly between the genders in as much as possible, recognizing gender fluid and non-binary members. Resolve that an amendment shall be proposed to prohibit any person under contract with the DNC or any Democratic Party affiliate organization from serving on the Budget and Finance Committee. Resolve that the results of the, of the report and the Executive Committee discussion should, be, should then be sent to the full DNC membership and that after each election cycle, e.g. presidential midterm, a published report on the focus of the DNC's finances, including all major expenditures and vendors be made available, resolve that the DNC propose and pass a bylaw amendment that changes the requirement of the DNC Budget and Finance Committee to produce a report on the goals, purposes of expenditures and the results of expenditures and staff for discussion every two years instead of annually at the next opportunity in compliance with the DNC rules for amendments and amendment notification. So that is the amendment that has been submitted to us by Jack Hanna, uh, who uh, is working with, uh, with DNC Rules Committee member Jim Zogby. So that's the resolution. Is there any debate? I see no hands raised and no questions in the question box. You're stunned. <laughs> Not really on this one. <laughs> uh, and in general. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Hearing no further uh, debate, we will vote on resolution 2020-004. So Sonia, would you please bring up the poll for this one? So again, a yes vote adopts this resolution as a part of the convention. A no vote would reject this resolution as part of the convention. We still have votes coming in. If you haven't voted, please vote. Okay, let's close the polls. The vote is 59 in favor and zero opposed. Uh, so we've adopted resolution 2020-004.